Would you be able to tell me, in, in the time that you've been here in Innisfail, you said just before we started filming, it's been about two years. Mm -hmm. Have you experienced racism, and is Innisfail an inherently racist town? No, not at all. Uh, it's been over two years I'm here uh, in this town, and people are so friendly. I'm here today in Innisfail, Alberta, because a band of radical Black Lives Matter protesters are planning to come to this small town in rural Alberta to re-educate the people of this small town. They think that the people here are inherently racist and some factions on town council are too scared to say no. Now I'm going to be going throughout town here in Innisfail to speak with just the locals, to speak with some town councillors, to speak with some business owners, to get a real feel. Is this actually a racist town? My first stop was actually a local tobacco store on the main drag here of this small town. The owner happens to be a minority Canadian. Let's see if he has ever experienced racism in this town. Would you be able to tell me in, in the time that you've been here in Innisfail, you said just before we started filming it's been about two years. Have you experienced racism and is Innisfail an inherently racist town? No, not at all. Uh, it's been over two years I'm here uh, in this town and people are so friendly and they love to uh, come in this store and uh, just because of their, like uh, you can say, love and uh, I'm staying here, it's been over two years and my business is uh, quite successful. And I'm quite happy. I'd, I'd never seen any racism in this town. And uh, it's good. After speaking with the owner of that tobacco store, who said himself that he has never once experienced racism in the town of Innisfail, I figured I would go to the town hall, where there actually was a small town hall gathering of folks who were concerned about what was going on on Saturday. I think that people in Innisfail have been very accepting of people, very welcoming. How does it make you feel that there's a group of people who think you need to be re-educated? What would you tell them? I feel like I'm being bullied and free speech is being trampled to death. No, I don't think they need to re-educate us. I don't think there is systemic racism in here. And something that I have a, a real peeve with too is that so many of these protests the social distancing and the the caution that should be going on and other groups are forced to uh, abide by they are not making sure that that happens in these protests. Uh, Innisfail has a lot of seniors and it's seniors that will suffer for this if we get a big there's hardly anything any cases in central Alberta and they're probably bringing that to our little town to a town that's full of seniors. At the small gathering, the mayor of the town decided to come out and I took that opportunity to speak with them. So we want to know what sort of you hope happens on Saturday, what you think the town thinks about what's planning to be uh, to, to occur on Saturday. What are your thoughts on it? Well, our, um, I mean, we've, uh, we've been given this, uh, I guess, this uh, opportunity to do something that apparently it appears that there's a situation where there's systemic racism and discrimination in every community we w we want to address that council's in favor of that if, if you know we're uh we're not we're not of the feeling that it's a blatant or that we're any worse than any other community but absolutely we're in favor of addressing the the general comment of uh, systemic racism and we want to absolutely make awareness of that uh, very thing and uh, if this helps on Saturday that's what it's all about it's nothing to do with you know any of the other uh, causes that are going on in North America right now uh, we're hoping that it stays friendly and, and, it's, and it's educational for the community that's what we want. Can you give me an example of systemic racism here in Innisfil? Uh, systemic racism in my my thoughts I mean I've my uh, thoughts have sometimes been misconstrued too but uh, is it's it's uh, it's it's a, a somewhat a human nature thing that people don't realize what they're what they're saying or doing at the time and how the impact it has on those individuals what sort of things are they saying though like a concrete thing that they could that's, that's fix I'm, I'm there to learn on Saturday I want to hear I want to hear what these are, that these claims, 
and uh, I personally am not aware of, of it, but I'm, I just haven't had, uh, I've been, I guess I've just been fortunate not to see it happen. Now someone that many Rebel viewers might know is Glenn Carrot, the organizer of the United We Roll convoy that drove a convoy all the way from Red Deer to Ottawa to Justin Trudeau's doorstep. He happens to be a counselor at this small town. Here's what he had to say. You were the only actual member of council to vote against uh, this plan that, that council has cooked up. It seems like you disagree with the mayor. What, what is it that you disagree with exactly? Well, I disagree with uh, the movement itself, Black Lives Matter movement. I am, I am all for anti-racism. I, I believe we need to be respectful and have policies within our city and within our town um, against racism and move forward in a positive and proactive way in that regard. But the difference here is that the Black Lives Matter movement is a, is a paid protesting organization that has created violence all across North America, Canada. There's in Edmonton, they lit up a cop, cop car. If people don't think that this can happen in our community, they can. I've had several businesses owners phone me uh, in the last day or so saying that they're scared. And so, and why are they scared? They're, they're not scared because they've heard that these pe protests are peaceful. They're scared because they've heard they're violent. And, and that, that itself, is, is not a good thing. We, we shouldn't be in fear in our, in our small town. We're a, we're a peaceful town. It, you know, uh, racism is a problem and it needs to be addressed, but this movement is not the way to address it and, and to instill violence and to, and to escalate and have people that are paid protesters to escalate and, and cause problems in a, in a rally that should be peaceful is, is unacceptable to me and I will stand behind that. Now after this town hall, I made my way to the No Frills where folks were telling me they had agreed to host this radical rally of re-education on their front lawn. So I'm currently standing on the grass where the protest is going to take place on Saturday. The massive re-education strategy where big city folk from Calgary and Edmonton are going to ship into this small town of Innisfail to re-educate the largely senior, largely white population here. Now, the folks that I've spoken to are concerned for quite a few reasons. They're concerned that they're being branded as racist when that's not the case. They're concerned about the coronavirus. While these Black Lives Matter and Antifa activists in Calgary and Edmonton can risk themselves going to these major protests, they're really concerned that that's going to cause an outbreak here. They've done a good job at maintaining a clean city here, a clean town uh, with very little outbreaks. And uh, they're concerned that that's going to be thrown into jeopardy by selfish people coming in from the city to intimidate the folks here. Now, I'm at the No Frills that is apparently uh, supportive of this. I just got out of that building where I spoke to John. It's John's No Frills. And he said to me, plain as day that he supported the protests. He was concerned that I had a camera. Now, of course, I'm a journalist. I'm going to be recording everything, even if it is inconvenient for those folks who are trying to hide what is going on. If they're risking the community to virtue signal, well, locals will just go shop at the co-op. It might be a little bit more expensive, but at least they support the community. They know who they serve, and it's not the radicals from the big cities. Watch this conversation with John from No Frills. Hey there, uh, John. Hi, I'm Kian. Hey. Nice to meet you. Um, we're just doing a story on the uh, rally that's going to happen here on Saturday. Right. Uh, we're just wondering if we chat with you about what's your sort of involvement was in it. No, I'm at a no comment time. It's my thing was they came up and asked, um, we want to have a protest and okay. we, uh, can we be on the land and we support the protests, There's no frills, right? And so I just said, yep, and that's kind of my, what I have to do with it, right? Yeah. Just, do you think that this sort of, the objects of this make it look like you're serving Sort of because Antifa is associated with Black Lives Matter. Do you think that it makes it look like No Frills is supporting the sort of radical group that has I overthrown right? Seattle? I can't get into all that. But you're letting it happen on your property. That's the thing. That's what people here in Innisfil are concerned. If somebody runs this all for us, right? First time I've been asked for a protest. Never had it happen before. Um, like I said, we had No Frills support protests, so we just said, fine. The protest is fine. And then as it's gotten bigger, we've learned stuff and yeah. right and found out that it's it's private property found out that it's right yeah the community members just they i, I was saying they just feel a little betrayed that because these protesters are coming to re-educate people here to say that they're racist that there's problems with this community and they're coming from outside so the locals here are thinking well who who do you care more about the people from downtown calgary and edmonton or the people who shop here and rely on the store so that's that's just the angle of like the, the what we're seeing from the community but yeah.
Now, right as I was leaving, I was able to catch up with someone going into No Frills to go shopping and listen to what she had to say. I've lived just outside of town for a decade and I don't want it to happen and I don't think it should happen. And no, they didn't ask any of our opinions here in town. And I don't think with this coronavirus that there should be people in here from other communities. We've kept this place quite clean and I don't think they should be here. The problem with these protests isn't necessarily their message. Black Lives Matter, of course they do. Every life matters. The problem is they're very quick to descend into anarchy and violence. In Seattle, they overran the downtown area and now there's just a giant no-go zone. You never know how these radical protests are going to turn out because Antifa is deeply embedded in them. There are some good eggs in them, but there's a lot of bad eggs. We saw the Antifa flags in Calgary and those are a great concern for the locals here. They're concerned that radicals are gonna come into the town and cause problems. They're concerned that they're going to bring the coronavirus in with them, even though this small town has kept themselves relatively safe from the global pandemic. There's lots of concern and anxiety going around in this small town because they're being bullied by radicals from big cities. It's going to be happening here on Saturday. Now, I'll tell you something. If the roles were reversed, if it was an extremist right-wing protest coming into a small left-wing town, well, the leftists, they'd be calling this no frills. They'd be telling them that they lost their business forever. They'd be blockading the roads, protesting, counter-protesting, so that they couldn't get into the small town in the first place. Unfortunately, the locals here are too nice. They're too worried to fight back. Hopefully, this story exposing what's about to happen in this small town of Innisfail, this invasion of this small town, sheds some light for the locals so that they can be prepared. For Rebel News in Innisfail, outside of the No Frills proudly hosting a Black Lives Matter slash Antifa re-education rally. I'm Kean Beckstein. Thanks for tuning into our coverage here at Rebel News. It's important that not only do you like and subscribe to us here on YouTube so you can stay up to date, you ring the notification bell. If you do that, YouTube can't redirect your traffic to mainstream media sites who will simply swoon over the Black Lives Matter and radical Antifa activists torching cities and towns across North America.